Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are joined today by Ryan Kavanaugh, who is the founder of Proxima, the co-founder of Triller, and the producer of the upcoming boxing pay-per-view event featuring Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr., who will be uh, engaging in an exhibition bout at the Staples Center November 28 in Los Angeles. And Ryan, many people know you for your, your prowess in filmmaking in Hollywood. What brought you to boxing in the sweet science? Well, it was, uh, I think it's when, you know, anything in, in, in this world is, is when business, uh, or business is when um, opportunity meets preparation. And uh, part of, you know, what I'm, what I'm doing these days is looking at how I can help deliver new entertainment mediums and new entertainment, <coughs> excuse me, content to Triller. And so this was one of those, you know, uh, perfect, I guess, uh, positive storms where I could take two of my worlds and blend them together. Um, the Tyson fight originally came about as a, I think it was a, it was a notion, I guess. Um, and I, I got to give, uh, you know, Sophie Watts, who's one of the, the uh, co-owners of the Legends League, you know, credit. It was something that I think we all saw Mike do this crazy video on Instagram. Um, I grew up as a super Mike Tyson fan and he, he talked about him being back and he looked fantastic and rumors started to percolate that maybe he was, uh, he was going to be doing a fight. And so Sophie and I have worked together in the past and, uh, we connected and she's one of Mike's partners and, um, just started talking about whether or not this was a reality. And she said, yeah, Mike and I formed this league, um, and we're, we're, we're considering doing a fight. And so, um, I think most people around me thought I was crazy and said that this Mike Tyson, he's, he's going to come back and fight. And, um, we talked and, we just started putting it together and um you know so triller obviously is a an app that that i helped to, to, to structure and put together and co-found and is a place where we like to kind of say culture you know it, it's a culture graphic of everything in culture development a lot of people refer to it as like today's mtv right and so because we we call our culture graphic kind of it's anybody in the, the hip-hop r b rap space um not just a demographic that, that transitions naturally into sports. And so um, Triller is really a content destination for short form high end and, and, and mid end content amongst you know, all content creators of all forms. And it really focuses heavily on music and sports. And so um, music is obviously very prominent there. Sports is starting to get prominent. So it became very, a very natural progression, which was let's, let's put this fight together. Let's make it something for everyone. Um, and in doing that, let's make it really good for Triller where um, we're gonna, document Tyson's journey uh, of, of going from a retired fighter back into an unretired fighter. And frankly, now, as we've seen back into the best shape, I think he's, as, he's in as good shape as he was, uh, you know, when he was heavyweight last time. So transition that journey, or I'm sorry, document that journey, show it on Triller and tidbits. So five, 10 minute episodes, someone can go watch it the whole, you know, hour and a half, two hours, or they can go just enjoy five minutes and then end it with an epic event for, as we call it, the 18 to 80, you know, today's world, there's, there's, we all miss that. Um, let's all get together as a family and, you know, dad and son and daughter and mother and grandfather are all watching one thing together and enjoying it. And that was kind of the intent of putting this together is, is bringing that world back. So, you know, it came together and now all of a sudden, all those people that were like, this isn't a real fight are all of a sudden are like, oh my God. It's a real fight. It's got real judges. It's got a real winner. It's got betting, uh, sports betting. It's got, it's at the Staples Center. It's got four undercards. Uh, it's got, you know, and, and Tyson looks as good as he ever did. Like this, this has happening. Um, so I'm just, I'm really happy for all of us and can't wait for Saturday. Right. So uh, obviously it's your job to grow Triller. Uh, I'm curious as to how it's, this event is aligned with Triller's growth strategy and how the event kind of puts you on a path to gain that market share and brand awareness that you guys are looking at? So it's a very good question. Um, you know, as I said, so Triller, its roots are in music. And obviously there's a lot of conversion and crossover between music and sports. We already have working with the NBA and the NFL and the NHL. And, um, but, you know, fighting is obviously a natural progression as well, meaning, meaning boxing specifically. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we're using this to really launch our live event business. We did one big live event when COVID first started. 
We had 128 of the top world's top artists come together on one weekend where we programmed, I think, with hundreds of hours. We had five million concurrent, I mean, five million total viewers. Um, and, uh, you know, and that was the first part. But this is really the first major pay per view live event trailer we'll be doing. And it will launch that side of our business. So the concept is that it, it kind of has three pieces to it. One is it's got a lot of unique content so that people um, who want to watch anything about the Tyson Jones. And then obviously all the undercards, like, like, you know, you've got the, the, the um, Pauls and the Nates and the, you know, even, even the, the, the uh, singers like, like um, Lil Wayne and, and Wiz and all on Triller, you know, with high end content, that's just short and consumable very fast. And that's what it is. It's just quick consumable mm -hmm. content. And if you want to go watch it, you can watch it for five minutes. We're going to go, you know, break up. You want to watch, spend an hour. You can watch Tyson going from the start to fight week is here and oh shit, here I go. Um, mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we own the entire event. So we own, Triller owns the entire, uh, you know, three hour pay-per-view event and, and um, has put together, you know, a, we think a pretty incredible show that will be available for everybody on pay-per-view and on, um, and on uh, digital. And obviously that kind of sets forward like a new path for us, which is we want to be doing these kind of, you know, look, follow the content, follow the path on Triller, big event, and then, you know, next one, follow the path on Triller. And so that's really what it is. Yeah, and you talked about watching Tyson and Jones in their heyday. Uh, anyone of our generation has vivid memories of what that was like in the 90s. But at the same time, we have two guys who are over 50 years old at this point. What kind of a fight do you imagine happening and unfolding on Saturday? Because uh, you talked about that real fight and whatnot. You know, the California Commission has had their stance. So what kind of a event do you see for, uh, folding out? So uh, anybody that's seen Tyson's training videos or fighting, I think, uh, on, on Triller is, knows that this is real. He's in as good a shape as he was, you know, back when he was a heavyweight. So this is a real fight in every way with, with, with like two exceptions, one being that it's called an exhibition, right? And the word exhibition doesn't actually have a definition in, in boxing, except that it's not going on a professional record. So that, 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 that's the only real definition of exhibition. So the California... Fight Commission can can make false statements if they want, which is what they've done. They've made false statements. Um, but the, the 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 reality is, we have a contract with them, and we know what their contract says. And the contract is very simple. On the, from their perspective, it's an exhibition, which means that um, they will not be putting it on a professional fight record, as the commission would do that. Um, they've agreed to provide a ref, um, not a judge, but a ref who will be. Uh, uh, um, overseeing the fight purely, and it's under all professional fight rules. So when they say, oh, it's just for fun, you know, that's just him trying to cover himself because it's not just for fun. And, and Tyson Jones, everybody's made it very clear it's not just for fun. Their knockouts are allowed, betting is allowed. Um, the judge, the, the uh, ref is there for one thing and one thing only, which is basically make sure no one gets killed and make sure that people aren't, aren't you know, like Tyson doesn't bite his ear off or break his arm. Um, but sans that, they're there to judge it under professional rules. I'm uh, sorry, to um, uh, monitor professional rules. There's three judges which are put there by by the Cal, uh, by the um, Worldwide Boxing um, uh, Association, which is the de facto standard for judging. Um, they are judging officially. They're judging under fight rules. Um, they will be calling play by play. They will be determining a winner. Knockouts are allowed. A knockout is a win. They're actually, I, I mean, this is how false like it can be. People are saying, oh, I mean, how false they are. Like like people are, are say, uh, saying, or I've heard him say like, oh, there's no betting. Actually, there is betting. We're about to announce a major betting partner, full betting. Um, so look, the contract with them is very simple. They've commissioned the fight, sanctioned it. We have to call it an exhibition because it's not going on their card. That's all exhibition means. Um, we, we adjusted a few parts of professional fight rules. It's an eight round fight versus uh, a longer uh, fight. It's two minute rounds, uh, which is obviously a little bit shorter rounds. And they're using 12 ounce gloves, which are, were, are slightly a little more padded. But I, I think the analogy someone just gave me was it's like putting a roll of, of Kleenex on the front of a moving truck. Um, so, you know, other than that, um, and, and if you ask Tyson or Jones, who we speak to frequently, and you mention to them, you know, someone's saying this might not be a real fight. They go ape shit. It's like, really tell that to us. Like we're going in 
and fighting, it's as real as any fight we've ever had, and someone is going to get knocked out. So um, to clear the air, they're going to be fighting as if they were in the 80s and 90s in their Olympic primes and the, in, in the prime of their careers at, at that level. I just got off the phone with Tyson's partner and his words were, Tyson just said to me, I'm, I'm 1990 Mike. Uh-huh. Wow, the, that'll be a sight to see if that's the case on Saturday. Are you worried at all that the product could perhaps disappoint this new audience that you're tapping into? Uh, we've seen big fights disappoint in the past. Are you uh, wary of that as well too? Well, I'll tell you why. We really went to great lengths to make sure that didn't occur. So. You know, the interesting thing about Tyson, right, and, and, and Jones, but really I'd say Tyson is that um, I, I kind of use the statement 18 to 80, you know, um, and, 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 I, and I, it's the only real fighter or real event I can say really it does speak 18 to 80. Like people in their 40s and 50s, you know, I kind of say they remember, you know, Iron Mike walking out with those black shorts and while everybody came out all showy and like he looked at his opponent and people were like, ooh, like I, that's the scariest feeling. I just got chills, right? And I remember, you know, some people are a little bit older or a little bit maybe who weren't as, you know, uh, avid fighters, but they, everybody watched the Tyson fight. Everybody, you know, they remember him biting off Holyfield's ear and fighting with 20 cops in the ring and knocking them out, you know, and then even the younger generation, 18, 19, 20 year olds who, who weren't really, they were, you know, I don't know, four years old last time Mike fought, you know, they remember him. He's the guy from The Hangover and they know all about his craziness. And, you know, oh my God, he did this and he did that. And they've seen, you know, documentaries. Um, and so um, I think that, uh, you know, the messages that, that we came up with is, okay, people want to see Mike, and we have just um, hit a record. We just broke most pay-per-views ever pre-sold um, digitally of any fight in history. Um, so uh, we just, we're just about to put out a release, but Fight TV and us, are, you know, this is basically, this, this is outpacing the, the uh, McGregor-Pacquiao fight. Um, and so, um, you know, I, what, what we did around that, though, to make sure not to disappoint, because, you know, like you said, 18, 19, 20 year olds, maybe have never seen something like this before, is that we put together a lot, you know, quite a few undercards, um, but specifically even Jake Paul and Nate, who obviously are big, you know, YouTube social media influencers that have recently gotten into the fight world. This is going on their record. It is a full fight um, in every way. Um, and then we put together another three major undercards, as well as five of the biggest uh, music artists in the world. So Wiz Khalifa and Little Wayne and YG. And, um, and then we took out the Staples Center, put 21 cameras, 300 crew members. And I mean, it's one of the most beautiful, epic looking setups I've ever seen. So you tune in on a Saturday night for three hours, you're going to feel like everybody, it's a complete circle. There's the top musicians. It's like a Super Bowl halftime. You've got you know, Mike Tyson, you've got, you know, one of the biggest social media stars in the world fighting. Nobody's gonna, gonna walk away saying I'm disappointed. They're gonna go that, and also the, the look and feel of the fight, I can tell you, with 21 cameras and because of COVID having no audience, you're able to really like get in there and the lighting, it, it's, you're gonna feel like you're watching, you know, Rocky and, 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 and you know, real fight though, like the, the lighting and the feel and the movement. And, and this is where you come into play with that Hollywood flair and feel to a, a production. I'm sure there were plenty of traditional uh, broadcasters, OTT platforms, uh, you name it, vying for the rights for this fight uh, to exclusively stream it. And I'm sure that costs a pretty penny. What, what, what is that penny that uh, um, it costs Triller? We haven't disclosed the amount, but uh, a pretty penny would be right, <laughs> right to say. Um, it, was, it was not cheap, but, um, and, and I think um, there were others probably, not probably, I know there were others willing to pay more than us, but the concept was we wanted to do, and I think they wanted to do, um, maybe Tyson, everybody else, something very special. They didn't want it to just be like, okay, they're fighting, we're sticking it up on pay-per-view and let's see what happens. And as you said, some people might love it. Maybe people who aren't used to boxing, they, they pay for it and, you know, they wanted it to be a, like uh, as we did really an epic event that everybody will always remember and so you know this is shot with probably i'd say the highest production value i know of any fight in history it's got that whole concert it's got you know the whole just the, the, the there's you know the broadcasters having mario lopez there having sugar ray land i mean all of it just like it it's a Every single piece of this you're going to see is treated like you're watching a combination of the Super Bowl, the Academy Awards, Rocky, and 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 Vegas fight. 
And now going back to that pretty penny, CNBC reported it cost you guys 50 million to get the rights for this fight. Is that true? I can't confirm nor deny it, but I can just say it was uh, it was not cheap. It was not cheap. And you, you're looking at those numbers as we speak. The, the pay-per-view numbers for Mayweather McGregor, if I recall correctly, were 4.2 million buys. Is that what you're, are you trending over that at this moment? They were, I think they were a little bit above that. Um, I think it was closer to five, but um, right now on digital, which was a significant portion of that, it's harder to look at on, on traditional cable. Um, but on digital, we are trending far over where their pre-buys were now. What is that number? Again, I can't, uh, we have contracts I'm not allowed to share, but it's, it's uh, uh -huh. it tends to be historically a very good gauge of, you know, like, like a metric of, okay, if you're, if you're trending here, it tends to give you a good uh, kind of correlative to the fight. Um, so we feel from at least the digital side of it, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be something that, that, that a lot of the world will be tuning into. It's broadcast okay. in almost every country too. So I'll ask you this. I'll ask you to wear your prognosticator hat. How many buys do you think it'll do? Uh, or how much would you, how many buys would you like for it to do? I mean, I hope that we break all, all records. I hope we do five million. You know, but um, at the end of the day, you know, because we we really are a platform also about short form, we'll be happy if we do, you know, a couple hundred thousand, half a million, even though. You know, that's not from a pay-per-view perspective, per se, you know, a massive success from our perspective, if we're just delivering our audience great content, you know, that's first and foremost the goal. So, um, but if we can, if, if we never really expected to be trending where they were, if it ends up happening, like, I mean, that's amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. How will you measure the success of this event? Um, you know, I think obviously it's based on as long as our people who viewed it um, uh, walk away saying, wow, you know, I really got, um, a lot of bang for my buck. We're charging half of what UFC fights charge. And I think we're giving about five times the amount of, of value in terms of, you know, artists and musicians and, you know, celebrities and, you know, there's just going to be so much great, you know, interwined content in between the fights. Um, you know, we want people to walk away going, you know, we have a new, a newfound, um, love of, of, you know, kind of call it fighting music pay-per-view and you know there's something for everyone you know the the son and the father and the grandfather and the, the mother and the grandmother and the daughter are all sitting around watching this on thanksgiving weekend it's saturday saying wow like we're all happy and we all got something great from that mm -hmm. are are you a little bit down that this is taking place during a pandemic when you can't fill the staples center to twenty thousand capacity and have that real true event feeling you know it's interesting because yes on the one side obviously we wanted more than anything you know to have real true you know i don't know what to say more than anything but we want to have a, a a real true audience um at the center and to be able to experience close up on the other hand you know we're really happy that during this time we're able to deliver to people who don't have a lot much else to do um you know something that will be an epic experience that people will remember we think for the rest of their lives and um, and it also gave a whole new um, life to it, meaning that because there's not people in there, we were able to create this epic structure, let's call it, uh, like I said, of 21 cameras, close-ups, different lighting, where we don't have to worry about, hey, we're blocking the view of all these seats, as opposed to we can use all this production space to aim in and you know, make sure that what we're delivering on the pay-per-view side uh, to, to people at home is a better experience than they've ever experienced and better than even being at the fight. Um, you know, having every angle covered, every, you know, piece of this covered. And I think that's something that, um, that uh, will, will, will make a big difference. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a double, double edged sword, I guess. Mm -hmm. Now, in regards to sports specifically, uh, do you think boxing and with extension MMA is going to be the entry to market? for trailer as to the kind of presence you guys want to have in the, the sporting space? Um, I think that we'll see how this event goes. <laughs> um, hard for me to think past Saturday right now. I'm, you know, not, not sleeping and working on this 24 seven, but, um, but we do think it, it has a legs in it and we wouldn't be doing it if we didn't think this was a, you know, a long-term thing that, that this is just the start of, but you know, like anything else, um, you gotta, you gotta make it work. 
um, watching mm -hmm. do it again. Now, this event, of course, is a one-off, but uh, I, from what it sounds like, do you want to work with Mike Tyson as a long-term partner with the Legends Only League and uh, continue to procure events together? Sure. So we have a JV with, which, with Legends Only League, which effectively says we will be working together on, on future events. Um, I guess it's more in our discretion than anything, but um, like I said, assuming this goes well, this will not be Mike's last fight. And I wouldn't be surprised um, if Mike joined back into the actual pro world and started going, trying to go for it again. Like, uh, yeah, we'll see how, he, how the hell he does in this fight, but um, it's not out of the realm of possibility. And I can tell you in his head, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Um, so. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned those sponsors that you're bringing on by way of, of validating the bets and stuff. From what I recall, that's DraftKings, correct? Correct. DraftKings is our partner. Um, They'll be taking the bets. They, it's official betting. Um, actually, uh, you know, obviously state by state has to approve it, but it's been approved in multiple states, big states. Um, so obviously commission doesn't know what they're talking about when they try to say it's not real. It's like, oh, really? Well, why don't you ask the government if it's real? Uh -huh. uh, what do you make of the fact that considering the WBC, the World Boxing Council has instilled their own judges and former champions, these are champions that have never judged fights before. Do you think there might be some sort of a, uh, uh, do you have any qualms about that as far as having fighters that have never judged a fight being the dictator of who would win? Um, you know, we talked to uh, Tyson and Jones about their desires um, and, you know, how they wanted to see it happen. And I think because they're obviously both, you know, longtime fighters and we could have easily talked to WBC and said, we would like, you know, you know, people who are, are not seasoned fighters, but seasoned judges. Um, but, but I think at the end of the day, because Tyson and Jones know these three people well personally um, and have, have in many cases worked with them, um, I think they see a lot of themselves there, meaning they're saying, okay, how would we judge the fight ourselves if we were judging one of our peers? And uh, we, it seems like they would almost rather it be this way because um, there's a different respect um, from judges who have been in that ring before, um, you know, when they're judging, they know the rules obviously because they've had to live by them. So knowing the rules is not the hard part. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, the hard part, there's gets, there gets to be nuances about like, was that a point? Was that not a point? That oftentimes fighters will say, you know, I got robbed of that point because they didn't understand. And so I, I sense more that everybody's more excited to have people who have been, you know, behind the gloves when they're making the decision like did that point go to him or did it not because they were able to actually say we've been in those shoes before and whose point was it whereas other judges can't say that right and the reason i ask is because obviously there's so much controversy in in boxing judging and such throughout time i mean roy jones was involved with one of the most gross judging errors in, in boxing history during the 1988 olympics so hopefully there is no none of that uh, on Saturday night. It's a successful event. Everyone goes home safe. Do you uh, are, do you have any concerns that a 54 year old Tyson and a 51 year old Jones will be taking blows to the head at this age in, of their careers? You know, when we decided to do this, we obviously were skeptical in the beginning, but when we started to see their shape they were in, and now I, again, I, if you go to a trailer and you, you look at these videos. Um, I don't, I would say right now, pound for pound, you know, like they're, they're, I don't see anybody who's going to, who could say that they aren't up there with the best of them that are in their twenties or thirties or forties. And like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if Tyson goes back and tries to come into this at a, as a, you know, a pro, but both of them are, I mean, you look at old Tyson videos, match them up against his training today. He's just as strong, same with Jones. So, you know, you're obviously always a little concerned when you push the envelope a bit and you look at something different. But, um, you know, I think as they would say, age is just a state of mind, you know, at the end of the day, like if, if they're strong and they're fast and they're good, it's, you know. Right. And well, Mike Tyson's most famous quote was, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. We'll see what the plans are after Saturday and, and what their future holds. And great. That, that's in their respective that careers. Yeah. Well, Ryan, I really thank you for the time. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, share more knowledge around the event. And uh, hopefully it goes off with a hitch and uh, much success to you guys. Thank you so much. Really appreciate all your time. 
Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah, you. See you today. Bye.